Your cube shape solution and execution were really good. So you did the alg. But if you're going to execute it like that, I recommend that you rotate and do a Y2 and execute it from this angle instead, because the only move you have to do in order to set it up is a four on top, um, as opposed to if you were to do it from this angle, you had to do a negative two on top and a negative six on bottom. What it looks like to me is that you're not doing CO one look. You look for your third corner and your fourth corner on separate occasions and not at the same time. Usually there'll be around two corners on the top layer and on the bottom layer once you're done doing cube shape. I also recommend that if you're going to do the cube shape the way you did it, I do not recommend that you double flick with your right hand to do the negative six. Uh, if you're going to do the negative six, you should do it with your right wrist like this. The reason why this works so much better is because once you're done with this, your right hand is sort of in a really good position to do the next slice. You just have to move your, you know, your middle finger up here. If you were to double flick it, your hand would be here. Your thumb would be right here. Your index would be here. It wouldn't be a good sight and you would have to regrip entirely to start the out. So your CO solution was pretty good. It went like this. You did a one and a negative six on bottom. That would get these two corners up in the top layer after the slice. And then you just had to take care of this corner, which you did like this. You had a good CO solution, but you had a really big pause in between. It seems like you're trying to do CO one corner at a time instead of doing it all at once. And that makes your CO two look or maybe three look at times instead of one look, which is what you want. So there really are only seven CO cases, and I think you should memorize all of them. Here they are. So then you had EO, which you did a pretty interesting ALG for. So it also seems like you don't know full EO, which is also seven cases. And I really recommend learning this because you did this case in eight slices when you really could have done it in six with this ALG. And then you did CP, which is pretty straightforward. And then you actually flip the equator here. So looking at this case before the CP algorithm, you can notice that this equator is not flipped. So after the algorithm, because it's five slices, which is an odd amount of slices, it's going to flip this equator. What I imagine that you were thinking is that if you cancel the equator flip, that later it'll help you out with your EP. This is a huge misconception that a lot of people have. You should never intentionally flip the equator in the middle of your solve, ever. The only reason you would realistically do that is if you know exactly what your EP is and you're gonna dive right into it right after your CP. Under no other circumstances should you flip the equator in the middle of a solve. The reason why this is so important is because if you continue the solve, you have parity, and the way you did it is you reduced it to an adjacent swap, and when the equator isn't flipped for parity, it definitely slows down your time because you're doing like two extra slices. So then you did your EP. And before doing your last move, you canceled into the equator flip again, which goes back to the point of doing your equator flip during CP, which you shouldn't do. So you did a negative six and another negative six in order to flip the equator. And then you did parity. So the way you approached parity was not as efficient as you could have. The way you got to adjacent parity was with eight slices by doing two adjacent adjacent algs. You can actually get to adjacent parity in five slices from here if you use a double U perm. So that would look like this. And then parity would be right here. And then here you sort of fumbled the AUF. You did U2, U prime, D2 prime. I strongly recommend not doing the D2 prime with a double flick. I think you should try it with a wrist flick and do the U with an index pull like that. So in one motion, you're done with all of AUF.
So for your second solve, you did cube shape in 10 slices, which can definitely be reduced. You did it like this. And then you saw that you had shield kite, but from a Z2 angle, so kite shield. Um, and you decided to do a Z2 and then do the shape like this. So you definitely could have done this cube shape a lot differently. You could have done a Y2 and done something like this. So that's one slice to scallop kite, which if you position like this, you can do in three slices. Or you could have done the kite scallop solution a little differently. You could have not rotated and done something like this. And now you have kite scallop upside down. Also, just a note, when you got here on your cube shape, you should never ever do a Z2 during cube shape or during the solve ever. But if that's your only way of solving this cube shape, then you should really learn how to do this cube shape upside down. And the way that goes is like this. So your CO solution was great, except you got to this at around 8.5 seconds. You didn't recognize it until 9.4, which is when you did your first move, and you were only done at around 10 seconds. That's one and a half seconds to do one slice. This is something that needs to be fixed. If you're going to have a one slice CO, you should definitely, definitely recognize it and execute it in less than half a second. It takes a little bit of time, but once you develop the habit of being able to recognize one bar and a second bar, and then just going for it, you'll see a lot more consistency in this. Another reason that you shouldn't be pausing for CO like this is because for this shape specifically, you can track a lot of corners. So this corner is probably the easiest to track. It's just going to end up right here. And also this corner is pretty easy to track because once it goes on the top layer, it never really leaves except for this. But it comes right back. And now it's here. So just looking at this, looking at this corner and this corner, you already know that you're going to have a line here. So that's two pieces in CO that you know the location of before you've even done CO. What you can also do is you can track pieces during the ALG. So once you start doing the ALG, once you get around here, again, we know that these pieces are going to be on the left. So this piece is also quite easy to track. It goes right here. Now we know the locations of three pieces without being done with cube shape. Let's see if this corner is easy to track. Oh, it is. Because when you do shield square, the only slice that affects this corner is the last slice. One, two. This corner is not moved pretty much. And then three. And we're done. This corner goes back here. So if you get shield square with all of your top layer corners on the top, then you know that you're going to get a line here and a line here, which means that you're just one slice away from having CO done. Like that. So for EO, you had pretty much the easiest case, like that, just M2. The only thing is that if you're going to not predict your CO and pause and look at the CO, then you should definitely notice that if we're looking at this as like black and white and black and white, then we have one misoriented edge here, one white edge with the black, and one here, and also two here, and they're both opposite of each other. So that means that they're both symmetric. And rarely do we ever see symmetry in square one, especially with OBL and CO. So when you see something that's symmetrical, especially with EO, it's safe to assume that you're going to get some kind of like really easy EO, like M2 or double M2, something like that. So after your ALG, you did a one on bottom just to realign everything. And then you did CP. Except the way you finger tricked it was you had your first slice be counterclockwise. So you went like this. And although I don't disapprove of that, you didn't really have a reason to do that because your hand was in home grip and then you re-gripped, which you don't want to do. You want to be able to start as many algorithms as possible from home grip and eliminate as many re-grips as possible. If you're going to do the algorithm from the front, you should do it like this. But I also advise that if you're going to do this alg at all, you should really be conscious of the fact that you can do this alg from the back. And it goes like this. But you did it from the front, and so you got adjacent on bottom, which would have been the same if you did it from the back, but it would have been back here. 
so for this case, what you did was pretty straightforward. You did an adjacent adjacent to move it up to the top and then parity. The only problem with this is that you shouldn't have to do four slices, one, two, three, four, in order to move this adjacent swap from here to here. What you can do instead is bring it up with only one slice. What you should do is move it to the back right like this so that when you slice, your adjacent swap will be right here. And then you can realign the bottom layer and do your parity out. And the only thing you have to do is do a two on bottom in order to realign everything. So the way you solved this cube shape was strange, but it was seven slices, so not that bad, but we can definitely reduce that. So this is what you did. So very interesting solution, but you can actually do this cube shape in five slices if you reduce it to scallop kite. Like that. Then you reposition it and do that. If you're going to do the cube shape the way you did it, which I don't recommend, you need to readjust the way you do similar fists and shield squares because you're doing them one slice longer than you have to. So once you're here during your cube shape execution and you get to the shield square, what you actually can do instead of doing a negative four is do a two on bottom and then you can slice, do a one on bottom and you're basically just doing similar fist like that. But you did it this way, you did a negative four, which is pretty good, but not the best. What you did was you did this in three slices instead of two. And instead you could have done it in two slices like that. So your CO was pretty good. You did it in three slices. The only problem was that you paused in the middle of the algorithm, which again is going to be fixed by you knowing all of CO. And another easy EO. And another easy EO. And you have a habit of realigning the bottom layer after you're done with an algorithm. I would recommend not doing this all the time because there are some instances where you could cancel or you just shouldn't be doing extra moves when you don't know what you're doing them for, even if it's something as small as a one. So then you did CP, which is adjacent adjacent. You did it like this. But since you had it here, you don't want to have to do the alg from the front because you did a three and then a six on bottom. Um, instead of doing that, you could just do a three on top or a negative three and do the alg from the back. And then you solved EP. And then instead of canceling, you did another slice and then flip the equator and solve the cube. But you really shouldn't use the same adjacent adjacent alg twice if you're going to do UZ or any alg with a Z in it. Because if you only know one adjacent adjacent alg, then that only limits you to one angle. So if you have, say, an adjacent swap, a D2 or a U2 away, you have to do that U2 or D2. Uh, which sucks and is slow. And instead, you should do this algorithm with two adjacent swaps, one being in the back compared to the first one. So it goes like this. And then to flip the equator, done. It's important to know more than just one adjacent adjacent, so I'll give all four of them right here. So you started to solve with this cube shape. So 
So you definitely don't want to use that alg because it was seven slices and you can definitely do this in five. Here are two solutions that you should think about. And the second one. So you had a pretty straightforward one slice CO and it went like this. The only problem is the way you finger tricked it. You single flick this U2, which you want to be able to do with an E2, like that. And you also double flicked, you also double flick this D2, which you definitely don't want to do. You want to try to do wrist turns. So instead of doing the one slice in one, two, three, four finger motions, you want to be able to do it in one motion. So like this. So for EO, you had this case and you did it like this. Although that alg is only two slices longer than the optimal, you should not use that alg at all. You should definitely switch to the four slice one, which goes like this. And another way to do it is from this angle. So for CP, you had diag, diag, so you had a pretty easy case. No complaints there. And for EP, you did this U-perm with two adjacent swaps, and it went like this. So first of all, you did a weird U-prime before you did a D for your alg, which I don't really know why you would do that, because first of all, your equator is flipped, so if you're going to cancel your equator flip with the up layer, then you're going to have a U2 AUF if you have your up layer like this. So if anything, you're going to probably want to do it like that. So at the end of the alg, you can cancel the equator flip and you're going to have no AUF. Uh, you're going to have an ADF, but not an AUF. So you want to switch to the six slice U per alg, which goes like this. And with equator flip. So for your last solve, instead of doing a six as the last move of your scramble, you did a seven like that, uh, which is no big deal because it's at home solving. So it really doesn't matter. And also like this difference, there's no difference, like really, I mean, in competition, there's a difference, but like solving wise, there's no difference between starting off like this and starting off like this. So your cube shape went like this. And that was almost a perfect solution, almost entirely optimal. But the only problem was how you executed your similar fist, which was three slices instead of two. And you could have done something like that or like this. And then you did CO like this. So this wasn't the best CO solution. It took four slices, which is above anything that you should be doing for CO, uh, but that's okay because it seemed like you were just having trouble recognizing where your corners were, uh, but you definitely want to be able to just glance at the cube before you're doing CO and get a good game plan as to what you're doing for your CO. So if after cube shape I'm doing a solve and I see this, I would go, okay, so I have one top layer corner in the top right and I have three down here, so why don't I pair up this one first with this by doing something like this and finish CO like that. Or it's less total rotations because you have less double moves if you do something like this. Which I think is faster, but either one can work for you. Just don't do four slices. And just to keep in mind, you never want your first slice in CO to make a diagonal corner pair. Your first slice of a CO alg should always be something that makes a line or two adjacent corners. So you had the same EO case as last solve, which you did in the same way. I don't think I should say anything different other than you should learn the four slicer because as you can see, it's popped up in two of five of your solves. It's not really accurate to say that like this EO case is common because every EO case is common. There are only seven. You're, you should really know all seven so that you're prepared for anything that comes up. 
And then you had adjacent, adjacent as your CP, which you did from the front. Which again, I don't think I have to repeat that you should use the ALG from the back. And then you did EP in an interesting way. You did it like this. So you did the M2, which reduced it to a U perm. And then you did the U perm with two adjacent swaps. And although that ALG is pretty good, what you should use is this nine slicer, which goes like this. And with equator flip, it'd go like this. So overall, you have good fundamentals and good understanding of what to do after cube shape. So the biggest weaknesses in your solving are your cube shape, your CO and EP efficiency slash recognition, and your ALG choices. So starting off in reverse order, your ALG choices are going to be extremely important to how you solve square one. Because as you can see in the video, a lot of your ALGs that you used were suboptimal and like two, three, sometimes more than four slices away from what could have been optimal. A lot of the times people neglect how many slices could be cut off, even if it's like one or two. The reason why this matters so much is because when you're doing ALGs that aren't efficient or two or three slices less efficient than what you could be using, it really slows down your solves, especially if you're using a lot of different algorithms that all aren't optimal. The reason why this is so important is because as you get faster and continue to improve, the amount of slices you do in your solves and your algorithms becomes increasingly important. You don't wanna to have to break old habits like bad ALGs at when you're like nine to 10 seconds and you're trying to do things that are way more advanced than something like that. So in order to improve your algorithms, specifically cube shape, CO, and EP, what I've done is I've linked in the description all algorithms to cube shape, EO, CP, and EP, all good ones. <laughs> the cube shape document is the cube shape parity document, which really should function the same way whether or not you're learning cube shape parity. Um, if you're learning cube shape, I think you should definitely look at this document because it has all optimal algs, like they're all optimal. Move optimal, I mean. And usually move optimal means speed optimal when practiced. So next is recognition and efficiency, specifically in CO and EP. So for both of these ALG sets, if you want to improve recognition, you're going to have to learn all the ALGs. If you don't know full non-parity EP, I recommend you at least start learning that. You definitely shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself in learning it all, but you should definitely get it, get started with it and make sure to replace your suboptimal ALGs with optimal ALGs. In terms of CO, the difference in CO and EP is that CO has so few cases that you really shouldn't consider it that much of a step. You should really just try to get it out of the way and get really good at recognizing all seven cases. The only exception is that when you have all of your corners for CO on the wrong layer, then just do the EO alg instead of trying to flip CO like that. This was already covered in hashtag Cuber's video on square one tips and tricks, but I'm just gonna go over it again. Do the EO. And then before you do your last move, just like look at the cube and try to, instead of solving with the bottom layer on top, you do the inverse move on the top layer and a double move on the bottom in order to get it back. And in recognition with EO and CP, it's gonna get a lot easier as you just keep solving. That's just gonna get better naturally, as long as you know full EO and full CP, which are both like under 10 ALEX, I think. And last is your cube shape. So this is last because it is definitely the slowest step of your solve. A lot of the times you would solve cube shape between five to seven seconds. And if you cut that down to like two or three, then your times are gonna get way better. You don't wanna to try to tackle it all at once unless you're some sort of genius and you think you can do that, but I recommend relearning the way you do your three slicers, your four slicers. Like for shield square or square shield, you don't want to do something like one, two, three, four slices, when you can just do one, two, three slices. And then once you solidify yourself on all of your easy cube shapes, like barrel barrel, kite barrel, scallop kite, similar fist, shield square, all that stuff. Then spend some time learning scallop kite method, which is a really good way of getting any cube shape to a really familiar cube shape, which then you can solve really quickly. You could try learning scallop kite and then learning full optimal cube shape, or you could just go for full cube shape from the get-go, but whatever works for you, if you feel like you need to be eased into something like that, then you might wanna go scallop kite and then branch out your understanding rather than full forcing it. But yeah, hopefully you know what to do and what to fix in order to improve your solving. And, uh, hope this video helped. Cool. Bye. Wait, wait. You forgot to subscribe. Oh, also, I have an Instagrizzle and a Snapchat doodle.
And when the flater, ah, flater. And when the equator isn't flipped.